This week on Game Buzz, Warcraft gets a patch, Smash gets a teacher, and the return of the Delazer. Oh, it's back. It is back. <laughs> buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz. Where's Jay? Uh, Producer Jay is home today because of the snow we're getting, because we're not is. recording on Thursday like we normally do. No. And that. the reason we're not recording on Thursday like we normally do, because one of us, you, was violently ill in his vehicle on the way to work that morning. It was gross. <laughs> yeah. Still still some there. Still some there. Uh, yeah, it's hard to get that out of the upholstery. First time I've ever... Uh... Actually, it's the first time I've ever thrown up in the car. Really? I'm trying to think. Yeah, I can't think of any other time. Do you, do you remember you ever thrown up in the car before? No, I don't think I've ever vomited in my vehicle. Yeah, this is the first. And it was only because I had to get Megan to work, because uh, I knew I wasn't going to make it. So right. I had already decided I'm not going to work. You should have called me, man. Work. I could have driven her to work. No, no. I was like, I got this. I got this. Yeah. <laughs> but you did not. Yeah, no. Um, it, yeah, for full disclosure, I did have a bag in the car that... I was like, yeah, I'll just you know get sick of that if I have to. Did not get that bag open in time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm trying to clean that up. I'm my, I have the worst migraine. I'm getting sick. It was a terrible morning. I'm cleaning that up. Um, wow. And so I, when we went and got Megan, or my wife, her coffee, I got a coffee. I was like, okay, maybe this will help with my headache. Didn't even get a chance to open it. It, it was all over it. Ooh, <laughs> it was boy. all over it. Ooh, boy. Anyway, great, great way to start the show. Uh, I'm better yeah. now. This is Game Buzz. Thank yeah. you for tuning in. This is your <laughs> weekly 30-minute video game news podcast yep. and update on the uh, going on bodily my, uh... functions of uh, my brother, Mark. <laughs> I'm one of the hosts, Sean. I'm here with my brother. Hey-o. And now we're going to give you 30 minutes of the gaming news from the last week. Yes. And it has been a very buzzy week. It has been a big... But before we get to the big news, let's break the ice. Yeah, let's do a little game called First Five. So the way this works is... Either we come up with a topic or we have a listener who gives us a topic mm-hmm. and then the other one names the first five things that comes to mind in that topic. Yeah. Not the top five. Not nope. the best five. No. Nope. Not their favorite five. No. Nope. Well, that would have been a good one. But we're going to do first five. <laughs> so this one actually comes from my dog is right now trying to eat. Your dog is the best first five. Four off of my shelf. <laughs> it does look delicious. Shadow, get down. It's got that, what's that, what's that candy coating? What do they call that? It does look good. This is what happens when you hop them up on candy. <laughs> so this comes from one of our listeners, new listener. Her name is Renata. She is hey, the Renata. co-host of the longest-running World of Warcast. Sorry, World of Warcraft podcast. World of Warcast sounds great. And it's great. called World of Warcast. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's quite a trophy. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, cool. so she uh, she hosts that with her friend uh, Star Mike. Definitely check it out. It's a really good show. Always keeps you up to date on WoW, and it's uh, definitely worth a listen. That's awesome. When I rejoined the the, the ranks of Warcrafters, yeah, you're deep. that was the first podcast I went to find. Nice. And uh, happy I did. Get y'all caught I've up. I've made so many friends since then. Good. Because they have a great a great active Discord. Oh, so you actually get to play with these people, too? Yeah, hang out with them. What? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And they answer all of my questions, because she also is one of the writers for WoWhead. <laughs> oh, no way. So... Yeah, it, it, it's a goldmine. I, I absolutely lucked out big time. Finding this group of people <laughs> is amazing. Because I would they have been wandering around lost. I don't imagine these wind. people actually listen to Game Buzz, though, do they? Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't imagine. Pretend. Well, anyway, hey. <laughs> yeah, we'll just pretend you're yeah. listening. All right, so that's thanks great. for making it so I'm not lost in Azeroth somewhere. Dude, you're like famous now. I didn't know that. Trying to hitchhike a ride to Stonard. <laughs> so, well done. She wants to know, Mark, what are your first five text based games? Ooh, text based games. Like, like games that are. That, that have a lot of text in them, or just purely text based, like Zork. Wood. What's going on over there? Shadow is now trying to dig through the floor. I think she's doing a text based adventure as we speak. She is, yeah. Just typing in um, the dead. Yeah, text based. Okay, okay. Zork does come to mind, but I used to play this game. It was a browser game. I don't even remember the name of it, but it was entirely text based. Um, and Flash, I guess you'd have like up and down and left and right arrows and that was it. And everything else was text-based. Right. Um, I don't know if that counts. And I think it was called like, Sh- I want to say Shadowlands, but it's probably cause I'm looking at that right there. <laughs> um, I can't remember the name of that game. Um, but outside of that, I, um, I don't really, what about Oregon trail? Would you consider Oregon trail a text-based game? No, that's too visual, right? I don't know. Now I don't know. Um, I could say like any, any RPG has a lot of text in it. You could say that that's right. text-based. Right. I mean, what about MUDs, te- old MUDs. Yeah, like that's what I picture for being yeah. text-based. Um, and Zork is the only one that I've ever dabbled in. Other than that uh, one I talked about that was online. <laughs> I don't remember yeah. the name of it. Um, but yeah. Unfortunately, we're too old to live in the generation when it was when there were a lot of text-based games. Yes. You mean too young? Yeah, that's why. I mean. <laughs> yeah. 
the opposite. Yeah, we, we just so missed that, I think. Um, but we had a lot of choose your own adventure books, which I also relate to being a text based adventure. Yeah, it's, well, it's a book. Well, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a game. Completely text based. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you so plan to choose your own adventure book, yeah. would you keep your finger in the page where you had to make the decision? I played roguelike, man. If I'm dead, I'm done. Wow. Yeah, I threw the book out. Wow. That's it. <laughs> four, four pages in, made the wrong choice. I guess I'm dead. Yeah. Next, next book. Next Ma, book, please. Ma, I need another book. <laughs> <laughs> When's the next Scholastic awesome. Book Fair? Yeah. Uh, thanks so much, Renata. Yeah, and, thank you. Uh, that was fun. Yeah. I'll talk to you probably in 20 minutes when we finish recording this <laughs> Dude, I actually kind of want to play a text-based game now. You think, there's, you think there could be a resurgence of that? Maybe. I bet you that could come back. That'd be some good mobile games. You could do audio-based... You could do like a like an audio based game where you can play while you're listening, and then you make decisions, and like it could be like through Alexa, and then you tell Alexa what you want to do in it. Yeah, that could be the well, future. They, they did that with Skyrim. What they made Skyrim an Alexa based game. Don't you remember that at no. E three two years ago? No. Yeah, so they did a joke that they were going to put Skyrim on everything, right? On your smart fridge. On yeah, okay. So it was a joke. And then they put it on Alexa. No, no. Skyrim is actually on Alexa. I don't believe you. It's a, it's a dumbed-down version of the game. What? But it's, yeah, you tell her what you want to do. That is awesome. And she describes what happened. Okay, there's the future. Choose your own adventure books. I mean, games should just be audio-based apps that you put on your phone and you play in your car. Yeah. The well, end. Isn't that like a visual novel? <laughs> yeah, but, but but it's all audio. Like, visual say, is visual. You would choose... <laughs> Which direction do you want to go? Yeah. Okay. You you are at, you enter a cave. There's a left and a right turn. Which, which turn do you make? Ah, uh, left. And then uh, you veer off the road because you're not paying attention. <laughs> yeah, that could be a resurgence of things on, especially with Alexa and right. Siri and yes. Hey Google. Yes. Oh, I didn't just activate Woo. my whole living room. Here. Not us, but everybody listening. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That could be a thing, man. Anyway, yeah. let's get into hey, it. Hey, Google, find me some text-based adventures. <laughs> text-based apps, please. Yeah. Hopefully you're not listening to this on speakers, yeah. everyone. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that'd be, that's a good idea, man. Yeah. If only we knew I'm sure some exists. game developers. It's got to be. <laughs> yeah, if only. It's got to be a thing. It's, it's probably already around. <laughs> I don't know. All right. All right, what's the buzz? What's the buzz? What is the buzz? So first off, January 14th, yep. Battle for Azeroth patch 8.3, the final Ooh. major update patch came out. What came with that? Uh, so that comes with a new quest line featuring Rathian, uh, Deathwing's son. Gives you a legendary cloak that you can upgrade. Cool, cool. Uh, The quest opening chain is a bit long. I recommend breaking it into two sessions, um, but it's, it's a good time. And then there's some daily quests to go along with that that can be done quickly. Who's that guy? But uh, that guy yeah. is, uh, I don't know. All right. And uh, <laughs> also, oh, that's the that's saying you can be a death knight with any race. Oh, um, okay. Also, there is a new raid, Nihalatha, which is coming out oh. on the 21st. Oh. Yeah, so 8.3 launched. It was mostly successful. There was a few bugs. Uh, auction Yeah, wait, bugs, what happened with you? And, what, what? Oh, so there, was, there is still currently a <laughs> Mac bug. Okay. Anybody running OS X, X Catalina? Oh, yeah, didn't you uh, have a... Where's the other PC? It's under my desk. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it hooked up into one of these? That monitor. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, OSX Catalina, or 10.15.2. If you're on that on Mac and you're playing World of Warcraft, uh, you're probably noticing that your game is locking up and Man. potentially locking up your entire Mac and forcing you to hard reboot. Whoa. To the tune of 13 times in one night. Oh, that's you, I take it. That was me. Yeah, that was me. Dude, that's brutal. So they have identified that this is an issue, and they believe they have a solution, but they don't have a time frame yet for when they're going to push that solution to everybody what else. What year is this? This doesn't sound like a modern problem. Well, that's crazy. Is, it, is this just a Mac thing? Like uh, That is just a Mac problem, okay. yeah. All right, okay. There was some other graphical issues with people, but it's because gr- their graphics settings were being changed when the, when the patch was going in. Okay. And they have some issues with the auction house where mail's not getting delivered, so you're selling stuff. And it's registering you've sold stuff, but you're just not getting paid for oh, it. Oh, wow. So it's like Kijiji. Or eBay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> or eBay. Yeah, it's eBay. Yeah, they're holding it for okay. two to two to four weeks to <laughs> verify, and then they're going to release it to your account. Very good. Okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. That wow. is great. I'm going to make that reference later. All right, good. Uh, yeah, but that happened, and uh, they're working on fixing those up, and they'll have them done soon. And it's a good time so far. Yeah. And the new raid starts this Friday, and or this Tuesday. No, the 21st, whatever day that is, Tuesday. And I'll be going in Friday with my new guild. Sounds good. This sounds probably like a recap of a World of Warcast, except theirs is probably more entertaining. Oh, yeah, theirs is way more in-depth, entertaining, <laughs> knowledgeable. Yeah. But there you go. Now you're all caught up, everybody. Yep. And next up. Yeah. Resident Evil 3. Yeah, what is that? 
They're <laughs> dropping multiple endings. So Resident Evil 3 originally... Oh, man. I read that as two separate lines. On mine, it just says Resident Evil 3 drops. And I'm like, what? Did that release? And I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> Resident Evil gotcha, 3 gotcha, drops. Gotcha. Turn it sideways. <laughs> Uh, there we go. There That's you go. <laughs> much better. <laughs> yeah, always go landscape mode. Okay. Because uh, I write in landscape mode. Very good. Oh, Adam beat the world record. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you just saw it. Bug out just squashes. squashes world. No, just squashes. <laughs> squashes the world actually it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Resident Evil 3 used to have multiple endings. Yes. Capcom has come out and said, we're nixing that. We're cutting the way that it was. Where Resident Evil 2 remake was a strict... Uh, very linear remake. It was very similar to the original. They're making the Resident Evil 3 as more of a reimagining of the okay. game. They're giving, I think his name's Carlos. Yes. They're giving him a bigger role, more good, play. Good. It's going to be playable. It makes sense. Resident Evil 3 was, I thought, quick, and it didn't. It feel, it felt like a very short sub-story. Yeah. It feels like they're trying to flesh it out to make it more of its own Yeah, thing. so they're going to make it more honor with it, because they made that game quickly due yeah. to their contract with Sony. Yeah, it wasn't really ever supposed to be Resident Evil 3. It was like the red-headed stepchild, no yeah. offense to any red-headed stepchildren, Not of all. Resident Evil games. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. happening. That's exciting. Cool, that is exciting. After, and after our Resident Evil 2 hype this week, I'm... Yeah. Uh, I'm stoked. I'm feeling good for that. Yeah. Yeah, so Sony also made an announcement this week. They said... Uh, Man, Go pound sanity three. We're not coming. Breaking my heart. And they don't do PSX anymore either. It's like... No. All, they, all they do is these ridiculous Sony play like what is it yeah. so, state well, of play they're the biggest so they don't need to do anything else yeah I guess but, I mean in all honesty I think E3 is dying it is um, and people have been saying that for years I realize but they're having major problems holding on to yeah. uh, personal information of um, journalists and I know that the journalists hate that they've opened it up to the public because yeah. it's not a special event just for them anymore which yeah, you know what maybe if you yourself, think about but... it it's all because of Nintendo really but Think about it. They have investors that need they need to appease year round, and they have to wait for E three for big drops like this. Yeah, surely they must have been like, you know what? Let's spread that around a little bit. Yeah, we have to appease our investors all year round. So it was only a matter of time, I guess, before yeah. they dropped it. Not only that, E three to North Americans seems right. like it's the biggest gaming event on the planet. Right, but it's not even in the top five. No, it's pretty small. Like in Tokyo Game Show, Gamescom. There's two in China. But the announcements there were always the biggest. I don't understand why. I don't. It's because it was just for journalists, and when it started, I don't know how those other shows were in existence. And you know what? I think the other shows were all publicly included. I think that's probably why the sizes yeah. have changed. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So to, to a lot of North Americans, E3 feels like the be-all and end-all, but yeah. in reality, it's not. It's not that right. big a deal. Right, right, right. So people not going isn't that big a deal. Nintendo does their own directs already. Yep. Sony's taking that model. Xbox has been doing it. And like you said, they have investors that have to... Yeah. Keep happy all year long. And they have fa uh, fans and gamers that they have to keep happy all year long. Also true. Why make everybody wait for that one time a year? Yeah. It just feels like they, uh, I don't know. I don't feel like we've heard a lot from Sony lately. I feel like it's just been, I guess they're probably. Oh, you're about to hear a lot. <laughs> all right, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? I don't think Sony's ever going back. I don't think. This year being the launch man. of the PS5 and them saying no, I don't think we'll ever see them back at E3. This might be our last E3, I think, right here. You think? Yeah. I do. We'll see. I think Microsoft will have their own thing. And yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Adam. Yeah. Let's talk about Adam. So Adam is an entomologist. Is that right? Ent 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 entomologist. Entomin. Studies bugs. Wow. That's probably wrong, too. Yeah. I imagine he's super offended. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> he's really good at start topics. He's a friend of ours. We <laughs> yeah. met him, actually. He came here yeah, to uh, Halifax, right. Nova Scotia once yeah. with his wife, Megan. That's right. And uh, we all hung out. It's weird. It's like... Everybody's girlfriend's name is Megan that I know. Yeah, yeah, all the made up ones. All the yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I don't know. So she's my girlfriend Megan from Canada. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you wouldn't know her. You wouldn't know her. <laughs> but uh, he uh, he's a, he's a Star Tropics speedrunner. Star Tropics yeah. is an NES game that is beloved by a lot of people. I love that game and man. needs to have a remake, a, a resurgence. I can't believe it's not around anymore. So recently, five days ago, exactly, he was able to break. The world record yeah. for any percent run in a Star Tropic speed run. Yeah. He beat the game in one hour, four minutes, and seven seconds. He's been grinding at this, man. He's been thirsty for it. And yeah. he finally got That's it. That's right. I'm so happy for so it. So Adam streams this live on Twitch. You can go on there. You can probably watch this stream on there. Uh, he's yeah. entertaining. He's educational. And he's now a world record holder. Yeah. So that is awesome. Congratulations, Adam. That's huge. Super happy for it. He might be the first world record holder that I know. No. He's the second. Who's the first? Because I believe... Uh, base guy 
Chris. Oh yeah, Chris uh, holds got, a record for Beetlejuice, doesn't I he? he? I think he has a couple, at least Beetlejuice, though. At least. Yeah. And uh, there's just other people that we know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. But these guys are awesome because they they have these games they love and they just they pour everything they have yeah. into it, you know. And they're just so awesome to talk to. And it's great when somebody has a thing that they love, hearing them talk about it, and you know and what? Seeing them succeed. Mentioning this, uh, GDQ was just this past week, which is speed running games for mar- marathon style and then raising money for charity. And uh, I imagine we might see Adam at GDQ one of these. I think that speaking would of be Chris, very cool. guy, he was there, and um, I got to catch some of that. They just they went over three point some odd million just in that one week of charity. Like they raised three million. Wow, 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 wow! Yeah, I watched the very last stream, not live, but it was a Super Metroid one. And it was just really good. But that's awesome. Yeah, so maybe we'll see you there, Adam. That'd be sweet. Yeah. All right. So let's more talk news. about the delays. Time for the delayser. Yeah. So we had the delayser strike. Uh, <laughs> copyright to that phrase to Ryan McCaffrey yeah. from IGN. But the, the, cop, the delayser struck <laughs> last year. Like The Last of Us 2 announced we're going to be out in February. And then three days later said, nope, we're not coming out till the summer. Right. Yeah. That was a bad one, man. <laughs> they had a big state of play for it. And, yeah. Ugh. Three days later, it got delayed. <laughs> anyway, um, Final Fantasy VII, March, not the third anymore. Right. It was just a month delay. Yeah. It's getting pushed to April. Not a big so deal. So staying in the spring. Getting pushed to April. Probably not going to play it next year anyway. Yeah. And we're <laughs> going to talk about all of the delays and how we feel about delays after. And then I have a question for you. Okay. And then we have Avengers and Cyberpunk both pushed to September. Do you ever have any uh, hype for Avengers? I guess No, we're... I don't have hype for either one of those games. Cyberpunk does look good, but... But wasn't Cyberpunk... Like, they reported, hey, it's done. We're definitely going to be ready for our launch date. Yeah, it is so... ready and playable right now. So what is... I don't know. Is they, it a they polish did, thing? They did say, but I don't remember what they said. I, th- I think it was polish, but... Yeah. Okay, uh, so those those three oh, major really, games. It's probably because all got delayed. That was a huge area to be releasing in. Like there was a lot of stuff coming. And now out. there's nothing. Now, well, no, there's still lots. Animal Crossing, and Last of Us Two, and Resident no, Evil. No, the Last of Us Two is pushed. What to when? It got delayed last year. It was supposed to come out February twentieth, and three days later they announced it was getting delayed. But until summer, I'm pretty sh- sure. Sorry, it, no, is, Ghost of Tsushima got pushed to summer. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Last of Us is still around April. Isn't it? I'll have to look. Oh, my gosh. We should know. Yeah. A okay. news show should know. Yeah. Uh, Animal Crossing is still there. Uh, Resident Evil 3. Yeah. Uh, this could be something And, else. yeah, Capcom said Resident Evil 3 will not miss its release date. Oh, they, they did? They are going to hit it. God love them. Yeah. So these are, these delays are happening. Now, like we are always, May, May from a standpoint of a customer, we're always super on board for delays. Yeah, I don't care. You know what I mean? That matter to me. I got enough stuff. <laughs> right. Um, we can wait. There's no point in rushing. If it's not ready, don't do it. Right. But Eric, the Mighty Q-Dog, from the YouTube channel Mighty Q-Dog, yes. made a tweet the other day Why that got me thinking. Actually, it got me thinking so much, I called him. What? Yeah. He, he didn't had to talk was... to the Mighty Q-Dog? <laughs> no, he didn't answer. He oh, was in okay. a meeting. <laughs> so then I called our friend Rob yeah. because I thought he could lend me some insight into the topic. Okay. And he didn't answer because he was in the shower. Uh, well, how did you know that? Uh, he texted me and said, I'm in the shower. Yeah. I can't talk. You sure that's what happened? It was just a photo. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Eric wrote this. And this got me thinking. And I want I want to hear what your thoughts on this are. All right. All right. I'm Sometimes ready. bad things happen for good reasons. Good reasons that prevent worse things from happening. Mm-hmm. Regarding developer crunch, maybe you can't pay employees when you have no revenue. Maybe, just maybe, that product needs to be out now so they can sell it and pay people. Said so. Okay, so what's the point that you're that you're trying to say? So that got me thinking. Yep. So the the we don't want developers to have crunch because crunch is when they're all like working sixteen hours a day, right? Right. And they're right. miserable to yep. push a game out yep. to hit a release date. We always say, take as much time as you need. Right. Put it out when you want to. Yeah. Eric is raising the point that if That's... that game isn't on the shelf, yeah, they're not making money. Yeah. And what if they can't pay people mm-hmm. if that game is not on the shelf? Yeah, then we get a crap game released early, right? Like that's that's the only well, other option. Uh, I think that's it. That's your two options. You have money to delay it, or you release an unfinished game. That's that's his point, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> that's what I he's think, saying. I think he's I think he's raising a question of, you know, crunch. Yes, crunch is undeniably a bad thing, mm-hmm. but sometimes you need that bad thing. To prevent a yes. worse thing, you're not going to get paid and you're going to get laid off yes. from happening. Uh, the other option is that, um, you, A, you don't get paid anymore. Although you were, you're, 
this depends on if you're a contract basis or if you work for the company permanently. Right. Because if you're done after that game releases anyway, that crunch might give you some extra cash, but uh, and but then you have to continue working afterwards. But if you're done after that game's done, then you weren't going to get paid after it released anyway. So it, it, what I'm trying to say is as long as you still have a job after the game releases, then it's good uh-huh. to... Uh, <laughs> To, uh, so when when a company now these are all major companies so yes. I assume that they're going to be okay yes then even I, without the game then launching. I stick by our statement of let it be delayed and, right uh, but think about smaller studios or and and right. really there's nothing to say that even these studios are set up this way right smaller do studios you think just go out of business if they don't. when they well when they budget for a game yep. when you do your budget for a game yep. do you think they leave a ten percent or a twenty percent overhead well, of this is the money we need to keep aside. To pay people you see, in case we miss deadlines. It's not them doing it, though. though. It's their producers. It's the people that are paying for it to be. Right. The developer isn't usually funding it. It's the producers. Right. That are, so it's really them that make that decision. Um, and you only get a certain amount of money to make that happen. Otherwise, you're, you're toast, right? So so let's say you're Team Ninja or okay. Ninja Theory. Smaller developers. I think one of them was bought by Microsoft. I was going to say, yeah, I'm pretty sure they have big money now. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they didn't two years ago. Yes. Yeah. So they made they're making Hellblade and yeah. they got to hit this target. Okay, who's if their they producer? Don't uh, I think Sony produced that one? Oh, yeah. well, Sony should let them have as long as they need. <laughs> <laughs> but what if they don't? Like what? What is the? Do would you as a developer? I don't even know. Yeah, you, it's a hard. It's a hard question. It's like, do I work this extra overtime that sucks to get this game out? Because if you release a game that's bad, you might not have a job anyway. Yeah, you could be dooming your company. You're done. So, so you, you have, have to crunch is be necessary. in a situation where you have no choice, <laughs> yeah. you know, other yeah. than to do this because if you in it, it's an industry where results matter. I guess you know the I mean? only it's not like way, a government job where you don't have to be able to do anything. The only way to sum this up is avoid crunch if possible. That's it. If it's not possible, you got to do it. Right. If it's possible, please allow for yeah. more time. I guess this sort of like you're in the. You're in a, a, an essential services industry. Yes. And you guys occasionally have to work overtime. You, yes. Even more so when you were working in the ORs. Yeah, I am still working in the... I'm, my job now is more important than it was. Yeah. Like, if I... Anyway, yes. <laughs> so you do have those situations where they say, yeah, we recognize that it sucks, oh, but right. you have to work this it overtime. It happens. I've, I've actually had to come back from lunch without having a lunch sometimes because of something came up. This needs to be fixed by the end of the day or we don't have cases... Well, we don't right. have surgeries, but we can't day. save lives tomorrow. Right, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. People are going to die <laughs> if you don't come to work and do. <laughs> I don't this. know if it's ever been that dramatic, but and it's going to be a slow, drawn out death. Maybe somebody who's been waiting for a knee replacement for the last three years doesn't get it tomorrow if you don't do this right now. Right, so. or a heart transplant. Yeah, well, that th- those ones we usually have covered because we make sure of it <laughs> because of crunch, <laughs> because of crunch. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I like, but I, I like this tweet because because it's, it's great. Typically online, you see. Crunch is bad. Don't do crunch. Right. Treat your developers right. right. And I'm not saying that is not the case. But I do think that we don't consider the other point of view that in some cases, if you miss that deadline, yeah. you don't eat. Yeah. <laughs> you and know? I have to assume that's the only time crunch is ever done. Right? Why would you crunch if you don't have to? I don't. That's right. I so that's if you're people... crunching just to meet the deadline to maximize profits. Right. Right. That's shitty. Try to avoid that if you can. Yeah. But if it's if it's a case of this is our hard out, we have no money after this. Yeah. This game needs to be on shelves. Yeah, you would need to do that crunch. You need to, and even then, and then you have to. That would be even more stressful because you're like, oh my god, we have to put this game out, and we know it's not going to be good enough. Right. We know there's going to be bugs, but we're going to have to make that call anyway because right, that's going to affect your sales. Like you got to weigh that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's a lot of stress. I'm glad I don't have that. Me that too. My job is so stress-free. It's so much easier to just be like, don't crunch. No more crunch. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, I don't... Eric making me think these adult thoughts. Yeah, no. I, I, like I love Eric's Normally, thoughts. it's very mature, very business-like, and I love yeah. it. <laughs> and I mean, Eric specializes in making me think adult thoughts. Yeah, that's what he does. He's a very wise man. Who, uh, I'm pretty sure he's actually being run by Range Hood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's actually pulling the strings. All right. So, that's uh, some delays. Don't crunch. Uh, <laughs> Super Smash Bros. announcement. A new challenger approaches. Two of them, actually. Woo! The first one is Byleth, the teacher from Fire Emblem wondering Three wondering how you say it. It's just Byleth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Cool. So it's a male and a female, similar to all of the Fire Emblem heroes that you play as. Yeah. You can play oh, gender. so it's a skin. I thought you said it was a new character. 
No, no, it's a new character. It's like the new costume for like Marth or something, right? No, no, it's it's its own character. This one has a bow. I'm reading this here. <laughs> so, oh, so that you got a new bow for Marth. This one has a bow. Marth has a new bow. No. <laughs> what was the Fire Awakening, Fire Emblem Awakening character's name? Is he in this? Crom. He's Krom. in it. And Lucina, who is a reskin of Crom. Lucina's and they're both Marth, reskins Marth has a of skin. Marth. So Marth skin. These are Echo Fighters. No, I don't know what an Echo Fighter is. <laughs> so Echo Fighters are fighters that are based off of another fighter. Right. Which so let's is say you, you had a, a long-standing character. Let's say Marth. For okay, Marth. Yeah. For lack of a better term, we'll say Marth. Yeah. And then he has an Echo Fighter and named then Byleth. You made another character who was based on Marth, like what? Lucina. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Lucina is, I mean, Lucina literally pretends to be Marth in Fire Emblem Awakening. Oh, Lucina and is the female Byleth Awakening. option? No. <laughs> Lucina, Lucina is it. the female character, one of the female characters from Fire Emblem Awakening. She's already oh in the Oh my game. gosh. So who's the new character? Byleth. That's the skin. No. <laughs> Echo Fighter. <laughs> Whatever. Does it say Echo Fighter? No. <laughs> but it should. <laughs> The fact that you had to question it is why the internet is a, in a rage. <laughs> yeah. So she she or he comes in with Walu- Waluigi's moves. <laughs> Did you see the uh, new challenger, like the new uh, battle pack? And it ha- shows like six blank spots because they're going to ex- uh, release who they are. Yeah, yeah. And then somebody fl- were like, oh, we got the leak. And it showed all fire. New fire. <laughs> yeah. It the whole pretty, cast of fire. It was pretty good. Was pretty yeah. good. Um, so the what's best. the second one? You said two. Cuphead. What? So there's a Cuphead skin oh, coming. Oh, right. So this one's a skin yes. coming for the Me Fighter character. Did you see the funny picture of Byleth drinking everybody's tears out of the Cuphead skin? Uh, no, but that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's two new characters coming to, or two new skins, or a character and a skin uh, coming to fire or to uh, Smash Bros. Ultimate. Yeah. And the uh, Fire Emblem fans are rejoicing. Yay! Yeah, it's really strange to see them go from ten years ago being like this. Underground hidden gem <laughs> loving fans it's like this rabid <laughs> yeah. screaming fan base. Yeah, but uh, the internet really wanted Dante. Hey, were you expecting anybody else? Uh, n- no, I. I mean, I was pretty sure it was going to be Fire Emblem <laughs> character. It's Super Smash Bros. Emblem, isn't that what it's called? The lineup, Smash Emblem. Like if you look at the the like the group that just came out for this pack or whatever. Like Banjo is the only one that's like not a human like fighting character. <laughs> <laughs> look pretty funny. I know some people wanted Doom Guy and some people wanted Master Chief. Um, I don't know where Dante came from all of a sudden. Well, he's a. They've just been re releasing like the old. He's a human based character that uses a sword, isn't yeah. he? I'm surprised yeah. he's not there. Yeah, he will be. He will be. Yeah. <laughs> Give it time. Yeah, so. Uh, anyway. That's Super Smash Bros. Yeah. And the last piece of news is an unconfirmed fact. Oh, God. Is what that is now it? other this? news sites oh, are course. reporting. Your unconfirmed. On... Was it you that wrote it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge me. There's no way they're going to let you have Steam on Xbox, man. Dude, it's uh, other news sites are now reporting it. Now, whether or not they got that they're rumor reporting from a rumor. this news. <laughs> yeah, it's from us. Yeah. We heard from someone. Yeah. Game Buzz Podcast. <laughs> Yeah, they quote us in the article. Yeah, some but, of the big Warcraft cast people uh, will listen to the show, so it's got to be something. <laughs> <laughs> we know nothing. Um, but anyway, man, I really do hope that it's so. The way that they worded it is, you were going to have like a Windows option, yeah. like, like you switch to Windows mode, and yeah. then you can launch Steam off of that. Yeah, so sounds it's not awesome. Like, so their rumors wrong because that's not exactly what it's going to be like. It's going to be <laughs> what I predicted. Well, which is close to what you predicted. Anyway. It's Steam yeah. on your Xbox. That's it's all close. It down to. Yeah, just wait. It's happening. No. I can't wait. Never I got a nice crow pie in the fridge for you. Dude, you know what? If that actually happens, I would consider getting that over PS5. Yeah, I'm already considering. The deals on Steam, you, you just can't yeah. touch them. You can't. And if it would be like just playing it on a console anyway, then why not? Yeah. Oh, well, I want Steam on my console, dude. It's going to happen. Don't worry. Just wait. I want that UFO. Did you hear? Did you see the review about that UFO? That's no. the Alienware that looks like a Switch. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were like, oh, uh, yeah, it's just like a Switch, except there's not a limited amount of games or whatever. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, people were real upset. But anyway, I really want that thing. <laughs> yeah. It's just like the Switch, except eight times the price, probably. Anyway, um, that's it. That's the show. We we're going to roll into a final segment that we like to call The Countdown. Bum, 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 bum. Mark, what is The Countdown? Can you I almost describe the the what The Countdown I is without saying... Video game 20 questions. It's a, it's a game where we have 10 clues. 
you get it on the first clue, you get 10 points. You get it on the 10th clue, you get one point. Oh, so it's like 50 games, 20 questions. Yeah, <laughs> except you get points. <laughs> um, what's the score at right now? I think we right now are at 116 to 42. I got to be the 42 after last, week, last week's uh, letdown. That was down. sad. We actually got Ooh, that hurt. hate mail sent in <laughs> from Dean Lasagna. Dean, I'm sorry. Dean, your game room looks like gaming. it's coming along awesomely, by the way. Yeah, he was like... Can't wait to see he that. Sent me, he sent mail to our Twitter, at Game Buzz Podcast, and he said, if Mark doesn't get his <laughs> S together, I'm going to fly down there oh, and kick him gosh. right in the D. Uh, you know what? I would welcome him being anywhere near my D. <laughs> oh, boy. Anytime. All right, are you ready? Ready. Your countdown. Lay it on me. Clue number one. I usually put 10 at the top. I don't know why I did that. Anyway, clue number one. I was released in 2012. Ooh, that is fairly recent. Is it eight years ago? Can yeah. you believe that? 2012. That's around the time that we started the YouTube channel. It is. I'm going to say. No, it was that. It wasn't. Anyway. Around there, yeah. I'm going to say. What did I review? Um, the Walking Dead. Good guess. Have we really been doing this for eight years? Yeah. Long time. Number two. Or nine. I don't know. I wish I had reversed these. Anyway, I am a first person game. Hmm. I shouldn't have. I worded that funny. I am played the first person. <laughs> right. Uh, 2012 first person game I am that Mark would have picked. <laughs> For you. Let's see. That he would have picked for me. I'm played in the first person. 2012. Perspective. Perspective. Man, I hated first person games back then. Uh, well, Call of Duty on. Modern Warfare 2. Great guess. I do take place in modern time. That's number three. <laughs> so uh, that would have been, that was a really good guess. Oh, uh, Zombie You. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> All right. Throughout the number four, throughout the game, you are led on a led on by a stranger over a radio, which is kind of like Bioshock 2, actually. Number five, I am a survival horror game. Number six, I take place in London. Number seven, I am developed by Ubisoft. Eight, I was a Wii U launch game. Nine, we reviewed this on our channel. And ten, what am I with initial Z? Turns out the U is part of the word. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Zombie U, you got it. Cool. I I enjoyed that. We played that quite a bit. We did the review. Fun. Uh, it was, a, it was a, a decent launch game for the Wii U. Yeah. Roguelike. Probably like the only roguelike game I liked. Yeah. I liked the mechanic of if you died, you had to go back and kill your old zombie self to get your stuff back. Yeah. You know what? That's what you do in Hollow Knight, too. Is it? <laughs> yeah. I just realized. Nice. And the mummy demastered. Oh, yeah. Right. I still have yeah. to beat that. Cool. Good poise. Good pick. Good Good poise. poise. Good poise. Good, poise. <laughs> good pick. Good game. <laughs> Uh, thanks so much for listening, folks. If you are listening on iTunes, please give us a five-star review. It helps the show get noticed. Don't forget mm-hmm. to tell two friends. And we will see you next Thursday for more game news. I'm Sean. I am Mark. Buzz, buzz. buzz, buzz. See you, Jay.